it's Sandra. Welcome to another episode of Asexual Lives, My Asexual Life. This is a place to be for education about asexuality, all things asexual, and I share my own asexual life journey in order to help you and yours. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit the great big subscribe button down below right here, right now. Please hit that bell icon to get notified of every time I go live right now or post a new video. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you're finding the content useful, helpful or insightful in any way, shape or form. So if you didn't know who I am, I'm Sandra Bellamy, author of this beautiful book, Asexual Perspectives, 47 Asexual Stories, Love, Life and Sex, A Celebration of Asexual Diversity. I'm also the founder of Asexualized.com and the founder of Asexualized Academy. Welcome to tonight's episode. This one is all about don't make sexual assumptions so one thing that is very very annoying about society in general is that everyone jumps to conclusion that everyone is pretty much heterosexual or having sex or likes nudity all those type of things and i think in the 21st century people should really be aware that not everyone's heterosexual and they should also be aware of asexuality and not everyone likes, wants sex. And for people like me, I'm personally nudity repulsed. And when I say nudity repulsed, I mean I don't want to look at nudity in sculptures, in paintings, in drawings or anything or on TV. So one of the uh, things that's going around on Facebook is that the little pictures that go in um, Messenger I've had two friends now message me with the same thing, right? One one is my best female friend message at me, but I think she was just like sending it to like multiple people at once. And then I had another friend message me tonight. And it's basically two like naked men at a Christmas tree. You know, I just don't appreciate this type of thing because I don't find it very funny. And I, I honestly, I don't know if you want to see it because it's nude, right? So if you're new to a pulse like me, look away. But I mean, this came up so I can see it. But I don't like that personally. But there you go. It's a bit gross to say. I mean, you can't see their penis, but you can see their bum. That's enough of that. And it says, uh, pass them on. They're done at my house. And, you know, it's that's, that's supposed to be like really, really funny. And I don't find it funny at all. You know, it's like I don't like men looking like I don't like mussy men for a start you know and there's such like assumption that you know like really muscular guys are much more sexually appealing and um and you know I, I just don't like it at all you know I, I just don't get attracted to guys that have big muscles and that look like a typical muscly guy it doesn't attract me whatsoever and I really hate it when people make sexual assumptions like I'm going to really like that post because I must be into sexual stuff with guys when I'm clearly not because I'm asexual. So obviously sometimes people just completely, um, you know, they completely don't actually listen to you or don't actually think what they're doing. You know, they don't think that, you know, I don't like nudity. I don't like sex means I don't like nudity and don't like sex means don't forward me rubbish stuff like that. But I don't even like, you know, I don't like seeing naked bodies, you know, and they everyone assumes that everyone is, you know, liking some sort of nudity or something to do with the body, which I don't. You know, I personally prefer the body fully clothed. If I'm attracted to a guy, I'm far more attracted to him with his clothes on than off and I'd rather not see him have his clothes off below the waist do you know what I mean chest is okay in private but I don't need to see below his waist he can keep that for himself you know so it really annoys me when people just make sexual assumptions like you know like you know like you're going to want to have sex you're going to want to look at naked bodies you're gonna want to like find things like that funny it's like I really don't find it funny and, you know, people seem to have this thing where if you're watching a movie, you know, if it's got sex in it or nudity, you just have to sit there. But I mean, it's like, well, you can look at the carpet, you can look at the ceiling, you can walk out the door, you can switch it over or fast forward it. You know what I mean? You don't have to stay specifically glued to something that's not good for you or that you don't like. Do you know what I mean? You do have a choice in life. 
you know, but it's horrible when people like message you stuff like that. You open the message and you see that. And it's like, well, I don't want to see guys bum cheeks. I don't find it funny saying they're done at my house. I don't want guys coming around my house naked. It's not what I'm interested in. Do you know what I mean? So I really wish people would stop making sexual assumptions. I wish people would stop making sexual assumptions about every single person on planet Earth wanting sex. Do you know what I mean? Because it's so damaging. You know what I mean? There are thousands of asexuals around the globe, thousands of us. And, you know, in the main, we don't like sex. We don't need it. You know, we don't need that in life. There's 55,000 other things we'd rather be doing, like working on projects or hobbies, seeing friends, doing some artistic work, building things, you know, um, planning our future, planning our day, stroking cats going out shopping, eating cake, you know what I mean? There's like hundreds and hundreds of things we could be doing rather than having sex, and many of us would prefer to do those other things, you know? So I just wish that if there was a message I could give to the world, it would be stop making sexual assumptions, you know? Because, you know, everyone clearly thinks that everyone likes sex and everyone likes a naked body when really they don't and there's another thing that does annoy me actually is when people like I say I'm nudity repulsed I hate nudity but most asexuals in my experience like nudity and I've got been told oh no they don't and I'm like well I only know me and my best friend Sam who's actually no nudity repulsed I've known of one other guy online, but I'm not sure he was actually asexual in the end because he was chatting a lot of women up, including one of my friends. And so, I, that, you know, the way he was going about his business of chatting women up begged the question whether he is really asexual and possibly unlikely to actually be properly nudity repulsed. He was abroad, but actually in my country, in person, I've only met one asexual who's literally nudity repulsed and most of the time I ask in my groups they don't mind like seeing the naked body um they just think you know it's a body but I don't think that way because I think it's a body in clothes is better than it's a body in the nod do you see what I'm saying do you know what I mean I you know to me I can't separate the body from being a sexual thing in the sense that it was apparently made to procreate which means having sexual intercourse to have babies do you know what I mean and yeah you could change your mind to not think of the body in a sexual way but to me it just looks sexual do you know what I mean to me like a pair of breasts look very sexual I, I can't like separate it from looking sexual and a penis looks sexual to me do do you know what I mean like you do tend to do sexual stuff with them so it's not something that looks to me like it's just not sexual. It looks to me like it's sexual. Aesthetically, it looks to like to me like it's sexual. You know, like when people like, oh, well, I don't, when I stopped looking at the naked body in a sexual manner and just saw it as a body, I stopped being like worried about nakedness. But for me, that doesn't work because I don't see it that way. I see people are better clothed. There's no need for people to go around being naked. It's totally unnecessary you know it's unnecessary in movies they just always write it into the plot do you know what I mean you can do a, you know that obviously if it's a really young certificate film certificate 12 then they imply they're going to have sex but you don't actually see them doing it you don't actually see them naked usually right so there's no reason why all the films couldn't do something like that it's just they decide to make the films have more and more nudity in it usually the, the higher the certificate number of people viewing it. So when you get into like 15, 18 certificates, then obviously uh, they're geared towards the male adult audience and they associate being an adult with sex and sexual desires. And that's another thing that can be quite annoying for asexuals is it's like sex is seen as an adult thing. And if you're not having sex, you're not an adult. Well, that's just a load of rubbish because the adult thing to do in your life is to decide for yourself whether you want sex or not and actually like it. A child's perspective is when you're told sex is great and everyone wants it and you're kept in the dark and think you're the only one who doesn't find it appealing and doesn't really need it or want it. And then you sometimes go along with it but because you don't know any better and you 
taught that's what you have to do in a relationship. So actually, that's a more childish mindset. That's a more childish way because you're not being true to who you are. Do you know what I mean? You're you're not being an adult. An adult is all about making your own decisions and your own choices in life. That's what an adult is, in which case some children can be very adult for their age because they can make their own independent choices at a very young age. I was like that in birth certificate age. When I was in birth certificate age, when I was very young, I was very old for my time. I used to make decisions for myself, even in my teenage years, decisions that most kids probably wouldn't make. Like, for example, I'll give you a really strange example that's got nothing to do with asexuality or bodies or anything. But, you know, I went to the orthodontist. I was sent to an orthodontist because, you know, that's what you usually go to for a brace for your teeth. But they never talked about having a brace for my teeth. They just talked about taking teeth out. Now, I hate pain. I hate blood. And I wasn't prepared to take my have my teeth taken out. So I think I was like 15 years old or younger then. And I said, oh, no, I'd have been younger, actually, I think. I think I would have been younger than that because... Yeah, I think I would have been younger. But anyway, I told them I wasn't having it done. That was it. There was no way I was having my teeth out. And they, they just looked at me, gone out. These adult dentists, like, oh, my God, a kid's deciding not to have a teeth out. It's like, yeah, I'm deciding. It's my body, my mouth, my teeth. You know, I'd rather have them a bit crooked than have teeth being pulled out, especially when they weren't even talking about a brace. It wasn't even mentioned. I'm like, you just want to pull my teeth out for the it. I still got a baby tooth. See? It looks like there's a gap. Uh, actually, there's a baby tooth. So I was born with this little tooth. Hey? So when I'm on photographs, sometimes it looks like I've got a gap. But actually, it's a little baby tooth. But it is a bit wobbly, so I have to be careful. I can't eat on it. So, But that's an example that most children wouldn't be able to make for themselves. Their parents would make it for them or something like that. I was always brought up to speak my mind. And to be be myself in that way, like I wouldn't say I was, you know, I felt quite repressed in some ways about being myself when I was younger in, in birth certificate age. Like I felt that I wasn't loved and appreciated for who I was in, when I was younger in birth certificate age. But I did also feel that I spoke my own mind no matter what. Not everyone liked it. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? I've always been outspoken because I have been brought up that way. And I, I do like that, you know, and I will say this for, for asexuals because I think it's not just me, but a lot of asexuals feel the same way that you get so fed up with everyone making sexual assumptions like, oh, you must be heterosexual. Oh, you must like sex. It's like when you go around the shops for Christmas, there's like aisles with boobs in, the, in them and, you know, like boob dolls or boob chocolates or boob toys and willy toys and willy lollipops and stuff like that and you're like it just like it's kind of like oh we gotta shove it in there because there's bound to be some people who like willies and like boobs and like all this stuff and it's like I can understand it when it's at a shop like Ann Summers you know like is specializes in that type of thing but when it's like in your local pound store and you see all this stuff, and you're like, well, really? Do you know what I mean? It's like, I come into the pound land in the UK to, like, buy things like kitchen roll and toiletries, not to buy, like, um, chocolate penis or marshmallow boobs. Do you know what I mean? I don't really want to see that thing in my local pound land store. But, you know, I what's so funny and very ironic is that I actually went for a job at Ann Summers because I was out of work and, you know, you have to apply for so many jobs. So I applied for this job at Ann Summers. God knows why I even applied for it. But I know why, because I was on benefits at the time and you have to apply for so many jobs. So I thought that stuff should be in Victoria's Secret. I don't watch Victoria's Secret, Heather. I've been told it's sexual Victoria's Secret and I wouldn't watch stuff like that. It's like Game of Thrones. I've never watched Game of Thrones. It's nice to see you, Heather, by the way. Lots of love. Um, thanks for being here. Yeah, um, I've heard about Victoria's Secrets because someone mentions this in my book. They say their dad was watching a Victoria's Secret advert or something, and they were trying to get them to like, like that type of sexual stuff. And the asexual person felt like they didn't like it. 
But in the end, they just went along with their dad because they're like their dad wouldn't understand them being asexual. So they just kind of like put up a untruth, you know, put up a front, pretended to like it when they didn't just to kind of shut them up. And so um, I think I've got that right. But you can always check out the link below. But, yeah, that's in the book. So, um, yeah, it's like Game of Thrones. So many asexuals watch Game of Thrones, tons of them. I mean, I went round the table once at an asexual meet, and there was only me that didn't watch it. Everyone else watched Game of Thrones. Oh, what's that out of my mouth? Sorry. Oh, it's a piece of paper out of my book. What's that doing? <laughs> I don't know where that came from. It's out of my book. Must have come off the front of the cover. Um. So yeah. So um. So yeah, Game of Thrones is very well watched by asexuals. They absolutely love it. But I know I've been told it's got sex and nudity in there. There's there's no way I'd watch that. I wouldn't watch anything and say I needed to watch something if it's got nudity in it. It's like even the other day I met an asexual and they're like, oh, well, I do watch nudity if it's relevant to the plot or storyline. And I'm like, it's never relevant to the storyline or plot. Like It's like you can do without it. And it, it, people have got the mentality that you can't do without it if it's put into a film. Yes, you can. You fast forward it, you're still going to know what's going on. Well, you know what I mean? Or put some tape over or something. It's just like, I just I just don't buy it. My ex used to be like that. It's just an excuse to see naked body. That's all it is. If you like naked bodies, fine, but keep it far from me. I'm not interested in that type of thing. And I just, you know, it's really annoying when people go, oh, I don't like na naked bodies either, but I'm quite happy to watch them in movies. I'm quite happy to sit, sit there staring at the screen. Do you know what I mean? It's like rubbish. It's like absolute rubbish. Do you know what I mean? It's like I feel uncomfortable if I see a naked body. I'm like looking down at the ground or a bit up and stuff like that. It's like, oh, I've tried a little bit to watch it a bit more. And it's like, it just grosses me out to be quite honest with you. But there are people that are grossed out by kissing. I love kissing. So, you know what I mean? Some asexuals absolutely hate kissing. There's one in my uh, asexual friends group and she, she was posting a post because she hates kissing. Um, you know, uh, hates kissing. As she says, she kisses her sons and she'll kiss her family on the cheek, but that's it. Oh, thanks for the thumbs up. So, do you know what I mean? I mean, obviously, aromantic asexuals, those who lack romantic attraction and sexual attraction, um they um they don't even like romance you know some aromantic asexuals they get fed up of hearing romance and romantic notions of romantic relationships so i suppose you know like what i hate about like all the sexual um you know expectations that a sexual assumptions is like very you know like it must be twofold for asexual aromantics i don't like blood in movies oh heather you're like me i don't like i hate horror movies i can't stand them i don't like blood in movies i can i can stand a little bit but um i don't like it if it gets too violent you know like i watched one movie at the cinema once and it really made me feel sick and I was like oh my god what was it it was a really really violent film but the violence was really gritty and realistic that's what made it worse I can't remember what it's called now it's a very dark film it's like I didn't like Deadpool like there's low I love superhero movies but I didn't like Deadpool that is too bloody for me too violent for me too aggressive uh, I don't find him funny and too much nudity. So I didn't watch Deadpool 2 because I hated Deadpool 1, you know. It's like I usually like superhero movies, but I did watch Deadpool 1. It's like just the swearing and everything. I didn't find it funny. And I'm with you, Heather, on the blood. Like I hate horror movies, but m the majority of asexuals, they like horror movies. Most of them do. I'm absolutely shocked about the amount of asexuals that love horror movies. Private Ryan was the worst. I was turning white and I was fainting. I haven't seen Private Ryan. God. I usually faint at the sight of blood in real life. Um, I nearly pass out, you know. Um, it makes me really ill. Like, I had to have a blood test this year um, when I'd had those back-to-back -back infections. Like, I had the first one, then I had the respiratory. So, in between... 
when just before when one infection was ending, the respiratory one was just about to begin. I had to have a blood test for the first time in years. And I absolutely got ill over that because I have anxiety with blood tests and I didn't want to have it done. And I was really upset because um, I just can't stand it. I can't stand needles and blood. I got a phobia of them, you know. But I finally went through with it. Luckily, the blood test came back negative for everything. So I don't have diabetes. Um, I don't have, you know, I don't have a problem with anything like that. Um, I don't have any problems with anything lacking in my body. I'm good health, in other words. So, you know, it's only my mind and stuff that I need to sort out, really. Um, it was War Movie, which ha was gross. Oh. Uh, yeah, I have watched some, you know, like films with like torture. Well, I try not to watch anything with torture in it, but I've watched some films and they do have torture. I have to look away and sometimes I have to like try and close my ears or go to the toilet because I can't stand it. Do you know what I mean? It's just far too much for me. Far too much for me. And um, yeah, I've heard of it. I know, I know the roughly who play the main star you know actor is but i you know i can imagine it's not good for you i'm really sorry you get like that. i do know that but i'm like that around hospitals like my mum she had a major operation years ago a really big operation i went to the wards to visit her and i was going white and nearly passing out and the nurse said yeah tom hanks that's right and the nurse said to me are you okay you don't because I didn't look well I had to go out and sit in the corridor so my mum would just come out of the recovery room she was recovering a little while later in the actual in the actual main ward but she had some tubes attached to her and that was just it you know but I used to be a hospital radio presenter for years so I used to be at Torquay hospital radio and that was hard because I was I was getting requests from patients but some of them had tubes in them and I used to feel faint and dizzy and I used to like get really ill over it because I've got a real problem with stuff like that. And so it's hard when you have phobias and genuine phobias, which manifest in the body as like problems. Do you know what I mean? Like I used to get really dizzy going there. I used to go on the hot ward. And when they got tubes coming out of them and stuff hooked up to them and I went there because I wanted to get a request, but the height, I didn't like heights as well. And it was like a seven story building, Torbay Hospital. So not only did I have the blood and the tubes or whatever, I had the seven stories high and all that stuff just made me ill. You just reminded me of that time I used to do that. But I wanted to get requests because it's like for the patients and I wanted them to be happy. So it's a case I did it for them, but it was very difficult. You used to come out feeling really dizzy. Um, yeah. It wasn't particularly nice. Oh, I think the the film I watched, which was gross, really violent, was Psycho, I think it was. American Psycho, that was it. That's what it's called. Never again will I ever watch that film. That was it. American Psycho. I went to the cinema and I watched a film I don't usually watch. It's called American Psycho. And seriously, it was it was really bad for the mind. It was so bloody, so gory, and it was like literally, I can't remember all of it because I think I blocked some of it out. But I think there was, I think there was things being chopped very bluntly, <laughs> body parts being chopped or something. It was just really horrible, a really dark, bloody. I, the trouble is it was a realistic I mean some people would have liked it for the realism if they were into that type of thing but I I'd rather have a film that's not very realistic where blood's concerned and stuff like that I'd rather have something like a superhero movie where they just get a bit bloody you know and it's not really really uh well they don't get much bloody really do they half the time if they do it's a bit more like you know it's not real but it, it was American Psycho I remembered now and oh it was just really horrendous it was really the worst, I think it was the most violently graphic, realistically violent film I've watched. And I just, I remember being in the cinema just thinking, oh my God, why did I come to see this film? And I also saw, was it last year, Red or something, which was one of the most sexual films you could ever see. And I had torture in it. I had to keep going to the toilet in the torture scenes. I'm like, I didn't know it had it in it. 
And on the trailers, it never showed any sex at all. And in the film, she was completely naked a lot of the time. You know, she was having sex with all these different guys and she was raped and, and then there was torture. And I was like, oh, this is disgusting. And I can't believe I paid to watch this, you know. And so I think I went to the toilet about, I can't remember if it was about five times or something. I kept going to the loo. I thought, I can't watch these scenes. It was just really horrible. It was very centred around around sex and around um, the fact of men using women for their bodies. It was like the worst film I could have seen. Like, what the hell? And I didn't know it had that in it. It didn't show it from the trailer. You know what I mean? It showed it as a psychological thriller. Um, so that's why I went to see it. It was horrible. Yeah, it was gross, Heather. It was horrible, you know? I hate it. I wish people wouldn't make sexual assumptions. So it really is not good, you know? There's so many people making sexual assumptions, like, oh, every woman like I, is going to like sexual stuff. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I just don't. <laughs> There's a lot of sexual stuff I don't like. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I, I it's sweet and innocent side of relationships far more than sexual stuff do you know what I mean like I have a cut-off point where that's enough now <laughs> do you know what I'm saying but it's a pretty sad that everyone seems to think that everyone just likes naked bodies and and likes certain men looking a certain way like I do not like anyone any guy that is muscly you know like loads and loads of women all around the world are supposedly crazy over guys that have got loads like a six pack they've got like abs like rip pockets of ribs and stuff and it's like i don't find that attractive at all i never have done i remember when i was 15 years old in birth certificate age i was a waitress right and these two women who were also waitresses, they used to go out for fag breaks. Right? I didn't smoke. So I used to get told off when I stood around with nothing to do. If they didn't have anything to do, they'd just go out and smoke cigarettes. Right. So I was told by the manager, you must you must be looking like you're doing something. You must fold, do fold dollies, are they called or something? Fold napkins, do this, do that. And so and so I learned to do that. And then these two women, they would sit there and stand there and they would talk about the Chippendales, you know, the strippers, the male strippers, and how wonderful. I don't like guys at a six pack. Oh, good, Heather. You're the same as me then. Yeah, I find them so unattractive. I really do. I find them totally unattractive. They are like armadillos. They just remind me of an armadillo. And you can't cuddle an armadillo because they're all rough, like ribbed. It's really weird. I can't understand why any woman would want that. It's not, to me, it's just gross. It's like looking at a blimmin' Ken doll that's pumped on steroids or something. It's just egotistical. Yeah, it's just horrible. I don't like it. I'd much rather have a skinny guy who, who was, you know, like loads of people would probably not like that type of guy, but I'd much rather have a skinny guy than a muscly guy any day. You know, one who's gentle and can hold me in a cute way, not someone who's big and bulky and got a six pack and you can't even put your arms around him because he just feels like he's all ribby and you can't actually feel his squishy soft side. It's just horrible. And so many people in society base the fact on a guy is so sexually appealing, which is probably why I don't like that because I don't get sexually appealed by guys, you know? But it's like, oh, he's so good looking and sexually appealing or whatever, just because he's like that. Well, I don't like sex. So, you know, that's why I, I, I'm not I'm not appealed by it. But I think even if I did like sex, I still wouldn't be interested in that because it's just too hard. It's like putting your arms, I can imagine, around something hard, you know, like a rubber tire or something. I just don't, I just don't like it. Just puts me off. And this was at 15, I knew I didn't like guys' bodies like that. So when the girls were talking and the, the waitresses were talking in the pub, I'd rather have some someone skinny with a regular body. Oh, that's good, Heather. You're like me like that. Do you know what I mean? I prefer skinny guys. I could have really skinny guys. Do you know what I mean? Like ones that uh, <laughs> like can't put any weight, they're really skinny, which some people can't do that because they don't like the look of them. But 
I have been with a bigger guy, a 14 stone guy, and he nearly crushed me. I'm like, that's the thing that put me off. I mean, you know, obviously personality is the most important thing, but I've got to have aesthetic attraction towards him. But I think, you know, if I was with a foreign guy, for example, Indian, which is my top attraction, and he put on a bit of weight, I'm not going to, like, leave him because of that, because as long as he's cute and cuddly and kind to me, it's fine. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, you know, if he went from being skinny and thin to being bigger guy, you know, so long as I'm attracted to, still to his face, that's all I care about, really. Because for me, nearly all my attraction aesthetics is based on the face. You know, it's just based on the face. I'm not bothered about the rest of the body, really. I like the shoulders and arm, like the frame, like face and frame here. But after that, I don't, you know, it's not really important to me. And especially below the waist, it's not important to me at all. So most of my attraction is literally centered around the guy's face. Do I like looking at his face? Is it pretty? Is it aesthetic? Is it han aesthetically handsome? Is it good looking? Is it kissable? And it's all based around the face with me. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's quite interesting, really. And I prefer clean shaven guys, to be honest, to guys with beards and stuff, because I find clean shavers a lot more attractive. It's like you can you know get really close to them whereas if they've got bushy beards on it's like you're not really close to them you're just close to a bush <laughs> but i've never really been attracted to bushy beard or oh, any facial hair it doesn't do anything for me you know and it's like all the young guys well not all of them but the majority of them they all want bushy beards and it's like all facial hair it's like it's the in thing and it's a trend and it's never stopped for the last few years I mean, why can't we go back to the other trends that happened years ago when everyone liked clean shaven guys? And now it's just like beards are in, beards. It's, it's like, to, me, to be honest, I think a lot of it's laziness. I know I'm being very presumptuous, but a lot of the guys I speak to that have beards are like, oh, I'm lazy. I can't be bothered to shave. So that's why I have a beard. That's that's what I've got back from the guys that have had them. You know, a lot of the guys that have had them. Because some guys have come across on asexualitic, you know, asexual dating sites. They've got a picture of them with no facial hair whatsoever. And they've got another picture where they've got loads of facial hair. And I'm like, well, do you normally have facial hair or don't you? They're like, oh, well, sometimes I just can't be bothered to shave, so I grow it. You know, and it's like, it's no good for me if I'm not attracted to a guy who's got a big bushy beard, is it? Because it just doesn't do anything for me. And so therefore, if I look at them with facial hair, I'm not going to be attracted to them usually. If there's a little bit, I could probably stand it because I did kiss someone recently who was Indian who did have a little um, tash and, and beard as well, which is very unusual for me. But he wasn't as aesthetically attractive as some other Indian guys. You know, the other Indian guy that I've danced with, who fortunately is a hypersexual, he's much better looking because he's clean shaven and everything, you know. So, um, but you know, I have kissed someone who had a beard, it quite surprised me. And a tash at the same time. I don't think I've ever kissed someone who's had both before. Uh, I've kissed someone I think who had a little tash before, but not both. I mean, this was, uh, I guess, well, this was a bit more than just a little tiny hair. I think it was a bit of a beard around here. So even if I had to kiss someone with a little bit of beard like that, I don't think I have. But yeah, so, you know, it just annoys me well how they stereotype what's attractive, you know, as being this muscular guy who's got a six pack, usually with a big penis, which would really put me off. I'm not being funny, but like, I don't have sex, right? But if I did have sex ever again, and if I wanted to have sex, which I don't, but if I did, I'd want the right size penis, not a huge one. If you put a huge one in you, it hurts. Do you know what I'm saying? I can't understand women who say they like big penises. It can be so uncomfortable. Like, I mean, I've had different, like, I've had sex in the past. I've had different size ones, right? And it's just like, if you get the wrong size, it can either be like, what the hell is that? Not worth it. Not that I want sex anyway, but do you know what I mean? It's like, you may as well not bother having anything in you because you can't even feel it because it's too small. And then you've got stuff that, one that's like too fat and hurts. And it's like, why do women like big pieces? I don't get it. it. Surely it's really uncomfortable for them and hurts. I can't understand that. You know what I mean? Because I'm thinking like practically. Because obviously most asexuals, if they are having sex, they kind of think more practically. They think, well, you know what I mean? It's not so like um, sensationalized or 
a big deal in in the one in sex way. It's more of a big deal in the emotional sense, in the uh, I'm not used to this, it's not what I usually do type thing. Do you know what I mean? And I just think, though, logically, maybe do a survey what, of why women like big penises. <laughs> I can't understand it, Heather. I really can't. I can't get why they like it. I mean, I suppose it's meant to be so they can feel it more, but I can't understand how they could actually fully put that in them and not hurt themselves. It's just like, you know, you've, your bit's only got such a hole to go down. It can't, you know, it can't go on forever. So I don't really understand that. Uh, but there you go. I don't get that at all. I don't understand why everyone assumes that a woman would like a big one of them. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, laugh out. Sorry. I uh, so I don't. Um, I mean, I don't need to know. You know, it doesn't really matter if you're not having sex. It doesn't matter how big or small it is, anyway. Do you know what I mean? But I just wonder why women like big ones. And you know, in the majority of the cases in the world, it's like, well, even if I did want that, I wouldn't want a big one anyway. So I, I found often in my life that I don't like a lot of the things that traditional, stereotypical, heterosexual women like. Do you know what I mean? And I guess that's how, looking back, I can I can see that I'm definitely asexual. Do you know what I mean? Like when you think about, like I was 15 at the time waitressing and these two women were on about male strippers and I just wasn't interested. It's a big turn off for me, that type of thing. I can't stand that type of thing. And that was at 15 years old. So obviously then I knew it was different. I'm just like, it's so gross. I'm not interested in that, you know? And I think when you think about stuff that the majority of the women population rave over, and then, like, you're, like, the opposite. You know that you're completely different. You know what I mean? It's, like, stands out like a sore thumb. I always knew I was different. I always knew that I didn't like the same things as everyone else. I mean, I've never liked nudity. I've been, like, really disgusted by a lot of nudity, especially when I found it out when I went to Centre Parks. I think I've told you that story before, you know. I went to Centre Parks, and I was in the changing room, after I'd been in the jacuzzi, I think it was, because there was an outdoor jacuzzi there, which was really nice. And when I was getting changed, you know, like, I, I had my clothes back on by then, as far as I remember. And there's, you know, I definitely don't show other people my naked body. If I'm in communal changing rooms, I go in the toilet and get the changed. I don't get, you know, other people to see me in the nod. I'm not into that. I do not want other people to see me. Not Obviously, when you're at school and pushed and forced into it, it's hard to ever get out of it. It's disgusting and I hate it. I had to go in communal showers at school occasionally because I used to try and get out of PE as much as possible. It made me feel sick. I'm like, why do I want to see other people's naked bodies? And I definitely don't want them seeing mine. It's disgusting. It's humiliating. Absolutely degrading, I think. I don't think anyone should be forced to go in communal showers. Why does everyone think that's okay? It's not okay. Your body's your own. It should be your your right to have who you want looking at it or no one at all, you know? I think that should be a boundary that's maintained and sustained by anyone in your life growing up, you know what I mean? Including people who are teachers at school who think it's fine to shove you in communal showers where there's no cubicles. And it's like, now you go for your shower. Get on with it. You remember in gym class you felt embarrassed? Oh, bless you. Did you have to go in communal showers as well then, Heather? Because I absolutely hated communal showers. I used to get out of it most of the time because I used to have verrucas and stuff on my feet. So I used to like, make out that I wasn't, you know, able to do it. My mum used to write me notes to say she's got a verruca or whatever so I could get out of it. From what I remember, my mum used to write me notes anyway, I think, to say, she, you know. What about streakers at stadiums? No, I hate them as well because I hate nudity. Do you know what I mean? I hate nudity full stop. I don't think there's any need for it. You know what I mean? Like, just no need for it. Absolutely no need for it. I don't like any stuff like that. And I don't, you know, I don't like no changing in front of people. No, I hate changing in front of people. I can't stand changing in front of people. 
Oh, no change in front of people at gym class. What you didn't, you, uh, I remember gym class. I felt embarrassed. Oh, you didn't change in front of people at gym class. Oh, I think that's what you said, didn't you? You felt embarrassed that you didn't change in front of other people. That's really good. But like, I remember that. I remember being forced into going in communal showers. And it was horrible because I used to get bullied by the people that I had to go in communal showers with. And it's like one of the most humiliating things ever. And I'm like, it's horrible. Oh, yeah. So you didn't change in front of other people because you felt embarrassed. But it's like it is. It's like it's my body. It's like when I like so when I went to Centre Parks. If you haven't heard the story, like I came out like I think of the jacuzzi or something, and this woman decided to, you know, like go in the communal changing area, and she was literally drying her hair, patting it dry with a towel, and had nothing on her body, and was stood there stark naked talking to me with her boobs in front of my face and everything. She was like really not far from me, asking me how my day's been. And how it's going at the park, centre parks. And I was like, just felt so disgusted and physically sick. Because I didn't want to see her body. But I, I looked at her face, but you couldn't help but see down below her boobs. It's like, and every she had nothing on her vagina. It was like completely unclothed. And it was just disgusting. And I knew then that I hated nudity and I hated women's bodies. I can't stand them. If I'm going to look at a naked body, I'd look at a bloke's body, not a female body. Uh, I don't mind nakedness as long as I'm not being forced to watch other people's genit genitals. I don't mind nakedness as long as I'm not being forced to watch other people's genitals. Mm. But a lot of the time when people are naked, you can see their genitals anyway, can't you? But it depends on what situation it is. I think women's... Oh, you mean... So you mean that you're all right seeing... Um, woman's chest but not her genital parts is that what you're trying to say and the same with guys yeah i can't stand any of that it's like i i really can't stand women's bodies the most i like my own a lot mine's the only woman's body naked i like looking at um i would go to bathroom stall oh well when i was um yeah, when I was in Centre Parks, I didn't get changed in front of her. She was there in the main commute bit, so I had to go past her to get out. And I was that, like, she just stopped straight in front of my face and started talking to me. And so I could not not see her because there was no, you know, she was right in my way to get out, to go out. Uh, no in change rooms, as long as they are covering their private parts, I'm fine with it. All right. Yeah. Oh, do you class breasts as private parts though? Because some people don't. Some people don't. They don't want to see the genital bit, but they don't care about seeing a woman's breast. Do you know what I mean? I don't like seeing a woman's breast. To me, that's private part because it's, you know, it's not something I think that personally should be on display at all in front of other people. Do you know what I mean? I just don't. So, um. But yeah, this woman, you know, there there was no way out. Of it. Like I, as far as I remember, well, I wasn't. I was clothed, as far as I remember, then, because I was fully dressed and I was, I wasn't expecting it. And she was just. I know she was in my way. She was there. And I think to go out was that way. I think, but I, I didn't expect her to say anything. She just literally stood there and was just talking to me. Like, hey, hey, how's your day? How are you enjoying the park then? And she's like patting her hair while she was like, naked, going like, so how are you then? How are you liking the park? How are you enjoying How are you enjoying your stay here? Yeah, do you know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, my God. And I was just thinking, I just need to get out of this situation as soon as possible. So I think I said, yeah, I'm having a really good time, thank you. It's great. And then I think off I went. <laughs> Breasts are sexualized by sight, aren't they? Natural. You see, that's why I disagree. That's why I disagree. That's partly what I was saying in this video earlier, that I don't like the fact that everyone assumes that people don't mind looking at breasts because I think they're sexual. I personally think they're sexual. I can't see them as not being sexual. To me, they're not natural. For me to see other women's breasts, it's not natural. Why would I want to see that? 
to me, it's gross. I know I'm in a minority. That's what I'm saying. Most people who are asexual even don't mind seeing the naked body. But I don't think it's anything natural about seeing a naked body whatsoever. I'm naked and repulsed, so I get completely disgusted by that type of thing. I don't. I. I. I can't stop. I think you have been geared by society to think of sexual. No, I hate them. I think they're sexual. I don't like it. You know, but I think I think a lot of people have been geared by to society to say they're natural because they see in artwork. I hate nudity in artwork. I hate it in sculptures. I hate it full stop. I don't think there should be breasts in paintings at all, ever. I don't think there should be any naked sculptures. I think all the world should not have anything like that in it because I hate it personally. For me, I can't stand it. So I think society actually uses the term it's natural as an excuse. To me, there's nothing natural about looking at another woman's naked body. Why is a female who's not attracted to any females whatsoever be interested in seeing the naked body and find that natural looking at another woman's breasts and body? It's not natural. I'm not their body. I'm not them. How is that natural? It's just not. It's gross. Breasts naturally serve a purpose to feed babies from birth. And I hate I hate pregnancy. I'm pregnancy repulsed. I can't stand pregnancy. It took me two and a half years to stop feeling sick seeing pregnant women in my old job. So to me, I don't like that either. I hate breastfeeding. I don't want to see that in public. I don't want to see that ever. You know, it's it's you could argue the whole body's natural then. You could argue that nothing's sexual because genitalia is there to procreate. Do you know what I mean? But you said you hate seeing genitalia. So obviously you could say genitalia are there to serve a purpose. Without genitalia, I wouldn't be alive because my parents would have had sex. And they're not asexual. Do you know what I mean? So um, genitalia do, you know, are there for the purpose of procreation, apparently. Or so I'm told. Do you know what I mean? So you could say that, that you could say that genitalia is natural. No, breasts don't procreate, but you just said they naturally serve a purpose to feed babies from birth, but not everyone actually feeds babies by their breasts. And breasts are designed to be involved after the procreation. So you have a baby and then you're meant to breastfeed it. It's all to do with procreation. Do you see what I mean? And you know what I mean? I don't like breasts. I see them as a sexual thing. You know what I mean? Like, do you know... Uh, women orgasm of breastfeeding as well. Hi, Nayla. We're having a nice, interesting, diverse discussion here. I hate nudity. And obviously, most people don't hate nudity like I do. Um, so obviously, not many people's going to agree with me, but that's fine. Um, yeah, so um, I was reading up about stuff to do with orgasms or whatever, because I do a lot of research still for my book, Asexual Guide to Sex and in general, I need to know about the stuff. So, yeah, and um, I ended up on a forum. It was a mum's forum, which creeps me out, actually, because I don't like... I, I, I've been, like I said, I'm pregnancy repulsed. Giving birth is not natural to me. It's the most unnatural thing in the world. To my mum, it's the most natural thing in the world, giving birth. My mum always wanted a kid, which she got me, and she always wanted a baby. That was her dream, to have a baby and be a housewife, which is exactly the opposite to me. I would never want to get pregnant. I would literally hate it that much. To get pregnant would literally be the worst thing ever in my life. I would detest it. And to me, giving birth is not natural at all in any way, shape or form. Actually, there is someone in my asexual perspectives books that also thinks the same as me, that childbirth is not natural, like pushing a head and body down the birth canal and opening it wide and all that pain is not a natural thing to go through. So at least I've got one person <laughs> that thinks the same. Hey, it was one person. It's one person better than no one, isn't it? But um, but yeah. So um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I hate the fact everyone assumes these things are natural. Um, I won't be able to have kids. My boyfriend doesn't want kids in general. Oh, well, if he doesn't want kids, then if you stay with him, then you won't be having kids. But obviously if you know you want kids you'd have to find someone else wouldn't you but yeah I don't want kids I can't 
I can't. I mean, obviously, some asexuals they adopt, don't they, or have artificial insemination, or you know, I mean, foster or something like that. But um, so there's other ways to have kids by natural, uh, by means that aren't um, natural per se. But you know, like, I mean, there's quite a lot of people. But I'm not into kids. I'll make up for it with fur babies. Yeah, I mean, I'm not into babies. I'm not. I mean, I get on well with babies. I get on well with kids. But I don't want kids of my own and I'm not into babies. Like when I was in my old job, my department was opposite a nursery. So obviously I had babies around me all the time with their mothers, some of which were breastfeeding. I had to deal with that because it's part of my job. I can't go around saying don't come near me in my because <laughs> it's like they sold products that were nursery products. They had mothers expecting babies there all the time. Obviously, I'm not going to go around saying, I hate babies, blah, blah, blah. It's like, don't be like that to people. I'm saying it on this channel. I was hoping for five to ten year old two kids. I was hoping for five to ten year old kids, old two kids. But cats and dogs will do. All oh, right. I can't. I can't stand the idea of having children if I ever had I knew at 15 years old that I never wanted kids ever and I decided at 15 if I ever wanted kids if I changed my mind or ever wanted them I would adopt there was no way in that hell shape or form I would ever have them by natural means I do not want that thing inside me and I do not like that type of thing at all obviously there are lots of asexuals that still want children so I respect that other people are different to me like most people are different to me on this. Most people think having kids is natural. I don't. Um, I knew I was up for it since I was three years old. Oh, wow. Wow. But Naila, you know, you have to decide if your boyfriend's right for you long term, if you want completely different things to him. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't give up on things just for him if you really, really want them. Do you know what I mean? Because you shouldn't have a relationship where it's, all to do with what he wants you've got to have some stuff that you want so so long as you're happy but if you know if you really want kids why not please explain in detail why not what what why why don't i like giving birth why don't i like having kid why is that what you're asking me why not i'm not sure what you're asking me why not about so i've never wanted children since i'm 15 years old I don't physically want a being inside my body, if this is what you're asking me about. I don't physically want another being inside my body. That's gross. It'd be like having an alien there. Giving birth is not natural. Yeah, giving birth is not natural to me. There's nothing natural about having something inside you and pushing it out of parts that need stretching and yelling out in pain. There's nothing natural about that. My hair's natural. I don't dye it. It's not forced. It's just natural. <laughs> you know, I'm not pushing my hair out. It's just there. It's nice. Do you know what I mean? And beautiful. That's natural. Like having something inside your body that's not your own body, to me, is not natural. It's like having an alien inside you. You know, it's a foreign body. It's not yours. It's another being inside you. The whole concept grosses me out. And then obviously, I mean, you should get my asexual perspectives book. Someone explains it far better in there than me. I don't know which one it's in the story. Um, but, you know, the woman, like the person explains, like pushing something through the birth canal and, and you know, your, your bits down there having to open really, really wide for it and be stretched. And, you know, it hurts. What, what's, the, what's natural about that? It isn't natural. I thought women have high pain threshold. Well, I certainly don't. I hate any type of pain. Thank you very much. Um, I do have a pain condition, though. Having said that, I have fibromyalgia. So I am I have pain every single day of my life. But I just block it out using the power of my mind. But many women obviously are in pain when they have kids. They cry out in pain, don't they, in the hospital? Do you know what I mean? It's like... There's nothing natural about that. I don't want kids. I've never wanted them. I like to live my own life and have my own life purpose as well. You can create babies in a lab and create them in a pod. Yeah, I don't want babies, full stop, because I like to have my own life. I don't live for another being in my life. I live here for me and to help other people. So my mission is not to have my own kids to carry on the human race. That 
but I don't even like that concept. It's like we're robots on conveyor belts. It's like you're meant to have kids. You procreate and then you're keeping the species alive. You come here, you go to work, you eat your food, you watch TV, you procreate, you create kids and then you die next, die next. Do you know what I mean? It's just like ridiculous. It's like, no, I'm here to leave a lasting legacy. I want to leave and help people when I'm not here anymore. That's why I love writing books. That's why I love writing books, because when I am no longer on this planet Earth, my books will still help tons of people in the future. Like this book is in six libraries in the UK, right? People can buy it in bookshops, right? These are 47 asexual stories, my own and 46. This book will live on for many more years after I am gone and people's lives will still be being changed by it. That's why writing is my ultimate passion and life purpose. And I truly want to make a difference. That's why I will keep writing books for asexuals in particular, because I love asexuality and I want to save people's lives because I know that people's, you know, of uh, a suicidal sometimes when they first find out they're asexual, you know? And I know this book helps them to know that they're okay being themselves. I get private message that, by them. So I know even when I'm gone, this book should still help to save some people's lives and make people feel better about themselves. That's what I'm here for in life, not to have kids. I am literally like a kid on purpose. I am the kid. I don't want any more. There's no room for any more in my life. If I was in a relationship, I would be the kid. I'd be with a younger guy who's probably 23, 24, somewhere around that age. He'd be the older one and I'd be the younger one because I'd purposely like that. I'm up till three or four in the morning. I like creating websites. I don't like cooking or anything like that, you know? Um, overpopulation, yeah. There's no need to have more. There's enough people having babies. I don't need to be one of them. Um, but yeah, so there's nothing. Yeah. Um, my dad said you create what you want in life. Your dad was definitely right, Heather. You are so right. Um, your dad's right. Yeah, you do. You create your own destiny. I actually have something I bought myself. Um, let me go grab it amongst all the stuff I've got here. Uh, where is it? Oh, yeah. Here it is. If I can get it without knocking everything over like I did earlier. Right, I bought this for myself. It's really important. I bought it for a international celebrate being single day gift to myself. It's called Create the Life You Love, right? And that is basically what I'm all about, creating a life that you love. Would you not say the art of nudity portrayed by artists of the past do not inspire the generations of today? Does that not mean they are also leaving a contribution of their lives? I personally hate nudity and I hate nudity in art. Uh, I don't see a need for it. So they could be artistic and create artwork without nudity in it. That's my take on it. There's no need for the nudity. I mean, obviously, any people who do the artwork are leaving it behind. I'm not denying that. I'm just saying I don't think there's a need for nudity. And personally, I don't like it in any sculptures, any paintings or anything. So, of course, there's there's my dad. He is a blacksmith, right? Which you may or may not know. And years ago, a blacksmith used to shoe horses, right? But blacksmiths separated from farriers. So farriers are the ones that shoe horses. Blacksmiths are the ones that make things in metalwork. Now, my dad makes things in metalwork. He's well known in the UK for being a top blacksmith. And um, he's very well known. He wins a lot of stuff. And, um, and his metalwork will live on for years to come. It's got no nudity in it. He doesn't do nudity stuff, right? But his metalwork, gates he's made, stuff like that, things for churches he's made, will stay on long after he's gone. So there are other people besides me that will leave legacies. But, you know, I'm really happy with books. That's my thing, because I know when people read books, it, it really changes their life. It can stop them feeling like they want to die. And I used to be suffer with depression when I, ever since I was a kid, growing up till 2012. And I used to want to die and kill myself a lot of the time. And I know the state of people's minds sometimes that private message me and the state they, they come to me in. And then when they've read, the, read this book, they're like, say, I've read the book and I feel okay now. I feel okay to be me. It's like a complete change around, you know? 
So while people can leave whatever legacy they want, you know, I'm leaving something which can literally change a life rather than someone just looking but at something. But obviously, some artwork can inspire people and stuff like that. So there are other people that leave legacies besides me, but I don't personally think there's a need for any nudity and any artwork. I get attracted to bodies with clothes on it. So to me, a guy who's wearing certain clothes is very, very attractive. Very, very attractive. So um, so someone who's guy who's wearing a black and white suit, for example, who's got a certain look like short, dark hair, clean shaven, particularly foreign coloured skin. Beautiful. Aesthetically beautiful. The clothes make him more gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, street clothes. Like if you've seen the street dance movies, I love the street dance clothes. The clothes make the guy so much more attractive, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, there are other people that do uh, leave a contribution of their lives. Um, so uh, I might get bottom surgery when I'm older. Bottom surgery? A dysphoria. No use it. Uh, B, no use for it. C, it causes peerage shit. And I don't like it. What's the use in having something that causes problems and has no use? I'm fine with nude art. Uh bottom surgery that sounds really painful unfortunately most women have periods until they're like 50s do you know what i mean it's just something we have to put up with that rubbish see laser i'm just pouring more water because i have to keep my mouth hydrated so i don't start losing my voice again like i did before um but yeah i know i know some people guys who have dysphoria with their um chests because I like a guy with hair, no hair on his chest. So again, that's another assumption people make is that um, that every woman likes a guy with a hairy masculine chest. I don't. I like guys with no hair on the chest whatsoever. Much more appealing. Do you know what I mean? And I've met some guys who are very have a dysphoria about that because it's like they've got a kid's body. But I like that. I don't like older guys' bodies because I'm not into older guys. I don't get attracted to them. Um, I'm fine with you. Like, I'm stuck with something that shouldn't be there. Yeah, but you, it has to be there to, to function properly. Do you know what I mean? Like, your bum needs to, like, go to the loo. So um, you have got a use for it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I know you, you do need to go to the toilet. Because my uncle, which I don't speak about on this channel, he's had major surgery and he, he's got, well, I better not say because it's personal, isn't it? But he's had major surgery and let's say it's affected him badly and he would probably... Um... Uh, do you like a hairy bum? I don't go looking at guys' bums. So that's an irrelevant question, really, because I, don't, I don't like seeing naked men, men naked below the waist. So I don't usually look at their bum. In the past, when I was with the guy i was with the guy um bottom surgery just removed the uterus oh right okay i thought you meant bottom surgery as in your bum well yeah i mean if you have that removed then obviously um obviously if you do decide you want sex at a later date that's gonna be can be quite painful um i think it can make it more painful and also even if you have certain parts of your anatomy removed, you can still have blood come, some blood come out or you can have some incontinence. I don't want to go into how I know this, but there are people in my life that have had operations and they've had um, they've had to have these operations because they've had problems uh, with lumps and things. So they've had to have operation to remove stuff. Right. They're their anatomy right which they didn't have a choice they either removed it or they could have potentially got a life condition that made them die right so um sometimes with some people it makes them like have some leakage permanently there like you are permanently wearing something so i'm just letting you know the other side of it to be aware of so i mean i, I don't think they don't like Someone I know stopped their periods, but they still leak. Like, you know what I mean? They they leak stuff. So instead of 
an average person being able to hold going to the toilet, they will leak stuff and you need to wear panty liners and things like that. And they tell you after you have the operation that that's going to happen to you and you're permanently doing that. So I just wanted to let you know that. Um, so removes typo for FTM, FTB, FNB, second one typo. I never heard that with trans people. It's not with a trans person that I know it from. It's from females that I know it from. One in particular um, that I know very well. They removed the entire uterus in bottom surgery. Well, th this I'm talking about, the thing that they had done was a hysterectomy, if you want to know what the actual procedure was, and then close the spot. But, so I don't know... But with the with the hysterectomy, because I don't I didn't research what what everything that was taken with the hysterectomy. Hysterectomy is obviously the ovary tubes and everything like that, so a woman can't get pregnant anymore. But I know that they told this person, the person told me that they told them that they can have some leakage. So they can be permanently wearing things like panty liners their whole life, you know, to stop like getting wet pants all the time. And I just wanted you to know that to know that there are consequences for everything you do in life. And that is something that can happen to some people. But the person who did their operation told them that. So they knew to expect that before. So I'm just, you know, because obviously I'm a responsible person on this channel. I can't say, you know, what's going to definitely happen to you or not happen to you because I don't know. I haven't had it done myself. But they had surgery to remove all that part because they had to for, you know, because they had lumps and so they had to have that removed so it wasn't actually to stop having a baby um it was to stop lumps but obviously people have hysterectomies a lot of the time to stop having babies they remove all the fallopian tubes and things like that so an egg can't go up and down it because they're gone the tubes um and they take all that part out so i just want you to know that there can be consequences to doing anything like that obviously I mean, personally, I hate surgery. I avoid anything like that because I know people who, going off that particular part of the body, I know other people that have had surgery on things like backs and it's made their back worse, not better. So I'm in agony. They go in for the back operation, they come out and they've got more back problems. Before they went in, they have even worse and they can't reverse it then because the surgery's done. The damage has been done, been cut or whatever. Do you know what I mean? You're afraid of surgery. Well, exactly. I mean, I personally wouldn't want anyone doing surgery to my bits. Do you know what I mean? Like, I have to say periods for females, because obviously, you know, that's what women get, are a nightmare. They're, uh, they're not particularly nice. But you can you can stop periods in a unnatural way by... But it's not good for the body doing that. You can take the pill, like contraceptive pill, and you can, instead of having a seven-day break, you continually take it. But you shouldn't really do that all the time because it hurts the body because the body needs to flush out. When the body... um, Well, guys can't... Guys don't get periods because guys don't produce eggs. So guys who are born guys, cis guys don't get periods so i don't know who told you any gender can get periods trans people yeah but that's the but you said any gender and so males who are cis males born cis males cis means they were born male they're still male now so all the cis guys in the world which is still a lot um they can't get periods so a cis guy is someone who's male and born male. I'm a cis woman. I was born female and still, you know that. Yeah, so not any gender can get periods, obviously, because cis males don't. So, yeah. But, you know, they're not a particularly pleasant thing to have. You know what I mean? But it's natural. It gets rid of a lot of toxins down there, actually. It flushes toxins out of your body. But saying only women get periods is inaccurate. But trans guys and trans women, only cis males don't get periods. 
Yeah, cis males don't get periods. Or, or people who no longer have periods. Of course, there are there are women that don't have periods after a certain age. I didn't say trans men aren't real men. I didn't say they're not. So you said trans men are real men. I'm not saying they're not real men. I said cis men don't get periods and women over a certain age, they go through menopause and they stop having periods. So do you know what I mean? Like not every single woman on this planet has periods. Genders aren't sexes. Well, if you look in uh, online, they call they call gender the same as sex. Sexes are male and female and intersex. Well, yeah, when you talk about uh, the opposite sex, you're referring to, like, if I'm female, I'm attracted to the opposite sex. It usually means I'm attracted to males. Gender is in the brain and soul. Well, I like being female. I was born female and I'm happy to stay female, but I have male tendency, you know, male traits. So I also think that you, there is a lot of problems in society where women have to be a certain way and men have to be a certain way. And if they're not that way, then they have to like change gender. That is also the other problem. Like I have some male traits, right? But I'm not going to, change i'm not i don't want to be trans right i want to stay female in body but i have some male traits do you know what i mean there's some guys that can have feminine traits and some people can feel that they that maybe they need to i'm non-binary because i'm not a girl despite my sex yeah my best friend's non-binary as well my best friend's non-binary as well. Um, I'm not non-binary. I'm female. I like being female, but I have some male traits. But you see, like, when I was a kid, I used to think it'd be easier for me, personally, if I was a guy in some of my past life. Like, I can't go into all the details, but situations and things, I just thought it'd be easier if I was a guy. It'd be better for me if I was a guy because of the way things were in my life. I just felt like being female and a girl was much more difficult for me in my personal situation. And that had I been a guy, it would have been a lot better for me. But I didn't want a dangly bit. You know, I didn't want a penis. I didn't want to change physically. And I didn't want to stop being female. So I do think that are some situations where, for example, some other people could get confused about that. And they could be like, well, I'm thinking about it'd be easy if I was male. I'm thinking about I've got male traits. And they could kind of maybe think they were meant to be another gender than they are because society doesn't look favourably on people that are a gender, but are behaving out of character for that gender. Does that make sense? So rather than someone being non-binary or trans, someone being their own gender, like I'm female, but I have male traits and society doesn't look favourable on some people that are guys that have female traits because they're all supposed to be macho and everything else and females that have male traits because they're supposed to be more timid and laid back and, you know, nurturing motherly instincts wanting to have kids do you see what i mean uh most trans people aren't trans to their ch to choose most trans people aren't trans to choose their gender it's because they are that gender they identify most people most trans people aren't trans to choose their gender it's because they are that gender they identify with people that think they're trans but aren't minus but typo most trans people aren't trans to choo chose their gender because they are that gender they identify with. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what you mean, but I think you mean that people that are tr some people. I think you mean that some people like who are trans are actually that gender. They were just given the wrong one at birth. Is that what you mean? 
Yeah, you do type fast. Sorry. I'm trying to keep up with you. <laughs> you know, I, I can't, you know, I can't say as much about trans people because I'm not trans. I have trans friends, though. I do have trans friends. Um, and I have my non-binary best friend as well. Um, so, but I just think it's bad that society forces people into boxes as well. Like, I know there's some people who are trans that, you know, that were born female, for example, but really think they're a male and feel and know that they're a guy. And there's some uh, guys that feel, think and know they're really a woman just that they de their body's not that way but they really are because that's part of their soul and who they are but with me I'm female and I'm happy to be female but I do have some male traits and that is not that is not normal you know women are expected to behave women who are born female and you know are female are expected to behave in a certain way that's what I'm saying um, don't say think because it can be offensive. I know what I mean. I said they think, feel, and believe, and know they are that. That's what I actually said. I said all of them. I said think, feel, and know. I said the word no. So, yeah, because you have to be able to think it as well as know it do you know what I mean but yeah I know other people might take it wrong but that's why I included the word no I know that some people are touchy well I'm not going to watch every single little thing I say you know I've said I've said like those I've said those three things together and pounce they can pounce on me all they want do you know what I mean like I can't watch every single little thing I say all the time I'm very careful try to be careful what I say, but I'm not a perfect person. But you know what I mean? But I, for example, with my birth certificate age, I'm not my birth certificate age. <laughs> Hugs. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I'm not perfect. So, you know, I did once one time offend a trans person on my channel a long, long time ago because they told me about that. Uh, no, it wasn't about that. It was about something else. Oh, that was it. I said you can choose to be, I said you can change your gender, you can change your hair colour, you can change, you can change like your body with plastic surgery or whatever, you can change everything but your birth certificate age. And I offended a trans person because they're like, well, no, I was always that gender. I was just born in the wrong body. So it wasn't something I changed, it was something I was already. They got very offended by that. So, you know, that's what I said. But it's, you know, from my point of view, it's very infuriating that I can't actually, you know, like people who are in the wrong body, they can do something about it. They can have surgery, but I can't change my birth certificate age. It's illegal. You can't do it. The only way you can do it, there's one way. And that's if you're, if you're got a lot of, you know, like if you got a criminal after you and you have to go in a safe house or something you know which I don't want <laughs> I don't want that to ever happen so there are very very I've researched into it they're very rare instances you know these people have to be like in severe trouble do you know what I mean I'm, I don't really want to even think about that so I don't want to change my age based on that do you know what I mean so um yeah I can't um can't change the burst of cage whatsoever I can't do anything about it which to me is very annoying because it's like you can do something about every single other thing, but your birth certificate age, it's the one thing you cannot physically change. Government goes on the age of the body instead of soul. Yeah, I know. They on the age of the amount of years we've been on the planet Earth, which actually we've been on planet, we've probably been on the planet Earth like loads of other times too. <laughs> As the soul just goes on, doesn't it? I wish I could change my species, but I can't because of my body. Yeah, I mean we're 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 a spiritual being in a human body, aren't we? I do actually like my body. I've grown to love my body. I have to say, and I do like being a girl, but I do like having man, you know, male traits as well. Like my male traits are part of what makes me me. I think. 
like I'm very outspoken. Like when I'm on this channel, not a lot of women would would say things in the way I do. Um, and most of my friends are guys. Most of my friends are guys. You know, most asexuals are um, they're more asexuals that are female than male. They're also more trans and non-binary uh, in the asexual community than it's meant to be in any other type of community. So uh, it was Avon, asexuality.org figures, 10% of asexuals are non-binary and 10% are transgender was the last figures. And that's supposed to be the highest of all the, all the sexualities, as far as I understand. So um, I hope I've got that right, as far as I understand. Um, but yeah, so we, you know, I actually do like my body. I've grown to really like my body. But I only, I only, I'm the only person that I like looking at naked. It's myself with me. It's like, I guess it's nice, but it's kind of bizarre. But it's like, I'm fine with my own body. I think it's really great. And I've really grown to like it a lot. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I, I know that I've got some male traits. You know, I'm, I clearly feel that. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I like it though. I don't want to give that up. You know, I do like having that. I like being outspoken. It doesn't always win me brownie points with people though. Do you know what I mean? Like some people don't always like it. Um but yeah, it's um it's uh it's always difficult, isn't it, when you feel that you're something different or not quite the norm as everyone else and you just kind of want to be accepted, I think, don't you? Or if you want to change something, you know, you can't. Like, like I said, my burst of cage really annoys me because I, you know, I just don't think or feel it's who I am. It's like a joke to me quite a lot. Um, but I'm very, you know, I'm very aware of my parents, you know. They gave birth to me and I don't want to be disrespectful. So I, I am grateful for my burst of cage that I, in the sense I was born, out of respect for them, obviously, because my mum, a long time ago, she's like, well, why would you want to change your age? I don't understand. I think she got a bit upset about it, really, because obviously they gave birth to me and and so they don't think there's a problem in that way. But my mum does know I'm really young. Like, she does say, she says, oh, I know that you're going to be with a younger guy. You know, I can't see you with an older guy as a boyfriend. So my mum's quite aware that I want a guy in his 20s uh to be in a relationship with me like 23 24 she probably agrees with you know she said going younger than that thinks too young for you Sandra at 23 24 you know that type of age range would be good for you um I started getting defensive over sight things I tried to control it I'm used to being attacked and getting touchy about things I'm trying to work on it yeah I start getting defensive over sight things I try to control and it, I'm used to being attacked and getting touchy about things. I'm trying to work on it. Yeah, it's it is hard, you know. People can hurt your feelings, but you've got to um try and be stronger and more robust because you know what I mean. If I listen to everyone, like there's a guy who um commented, in, uh, he came up in my notifications. He commented twice on this channel on a, on a video about plenty of fish dating, and it was an asexual perspective on when I was on plenty of fish dating. And he he was like, he left two comments and one's like, can you not please, can you, can, it's like, whoa, can you not put your face so near to the camera? And it's like, am I really going to be told what to do by a guy that's just come across my channel? Nope, I'm not going to be told what to do. It's just like, whatever, mate, I'm not going to listen to you. I run my channel. I don't get told by some person that just visits it and flies off, um, who's probably not even asexual. Um from the fact that the second comment was WTH, like he didn't really, I don't think, understood that I was asexual, what that meant. Um, but you know what I mean? I'm I'm not going to take any notice of that. I just have to laugh at it to myself. I'm like, is that all you do? You go and comment on someone's channel? And I just find it quite funny now sometimes. I'm like, is that the best you can do? Okay, whatever. Um, so yeah, I try to like, you know, I don't take that personally. I just take it as the fact that, you know, if that's his preference, don't watch my channel. If he thinks my face is too close up to the camera, which personally I don't, then don't watch the channel. You know, <laughs> simple as that, isn't it? Move on, on to one you prefer. Um, so, you know what I mean? It's, it's, you know, sometimes it's hard because feelings can be hurt, but usually most of the time with this channel, I'm good because I have lots of spam 
and some of them write horrible things and I just have to laugh at it. I'm just thinking, oh, here's another one. Here's another one. You get stupid things like, like really swearing language and it's like, well, what's that all about? Do you know what I mean? Or you get, you know, you get accused of uh, not really being asexual or abnormal or, you know, all the rubbish that goes on with like, oh, you know, um, you need to get laid and all that type of language. Do you know what I mean? It's just like ridiculous because some of it goes into my spam and I just delete it. And some of them swear at me and say horrible things, but I don't really get offended by that anymore. Not someone just comes and sweeps on my channel. I'm like, whatever. I kind of expect it in part. I mean, I don't want it because it's not nice, you know, so I'm not encouraging that. I gotta gotta chat with my boyfriend before he goes to bed. Peace night, dear friend. Yeah, I'm gonna go now. Been nice to talk to you. Lots of love and hugs to you. Uh, keep working on things like I do. It's always a journey, isn't it, of life? A real journey. And um, anyway, until next time, embrace your quirky and each other's. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and you're new to this channel, and hit the bell icon to get notified of every time I go live like now or post a new video. And I'll see you on the next video or live stream. Take care, Anila. Thank you for watching. Thanks to everyone else who's watching too. Bye. Lots of love. Bye.